Denless Zone Zero is one of the best and worst gotcha games that I have ever played. L give me a second to explain. But before I get into that, I'll leave a timestamp if you guys want to skip ahead for this. A little TLDR on what's going on with me real quickly. I know a lot of people have been saying, where's your Star Wars videos? Where's your Wuthering Ways videos? Where's your Zenless Zone Zero videos? Where with Legions, why are you not covering the topics you said you're going to cover? I said I was going to make a video on Star Rail 2.1, you know, Pentaconi. I said I was going to make a video on 1.1 for Wuwa. My thoughts, ZZZ, I had a lot of videos I want to do. Sometimes I get into these states where I'm just like, I don't even know if it's like burnt out. Maybe it is burnt out. But I, I go ham for weeks or months for a long period of time, burning the midnight oil, fucking get no sleep, constantly working, barely go outside, you know, have, sometimes I miss the gym. I don't really hang out with friends because I don't really have any more IRL friends. They've all either moved or got married, had kids, whatever. We don't really share the same things anymore. Sometimes I just get to the point where I'm like, I don't know, you feel that loneliness and you just like, sometimes overthink, I, I overthink sometimes. I'm like, man, is this worth, am, is like, am, am I doing, am I, am I wasting my time, blah, blah, And I start getting over in my head with myself and, uh, you know, I get tired of the grind and I would just completely shut my brain off and... I just like seclude myself from everything and everyone. And I just sit in a dark room or in my on my couch, watch anime, play video games, and I just don't do shit. And I, right this moment, like the last couple of days, I've been pretty much in that, in that state. And I kind of forced myself to stream ZZ because I had to for content, even though I wanted to take a little bit of a break. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of why like all my videos have been kind of lacking. I. I Kind of recharged a little bit by doing that. Slept in a lot, slept a lot, went to the gym, the not had to worry about content, you know. Uh, watched anime, played video games, you know, just for fun, not for content. So I I'm doing better now, okay? So let's let's get into why I'm doing this video now. Sorry about that, Lorraine. I just wanted to let everybody know that was, you know, that cared to ask and, you know, message me on Twitter, DM me, comment, stuff like that. So I'm fine. I just, I needed to take a little break. Legions, what do you mean when you say, DZZ is one of the best gacha games you've ever played and the worst. So let me give you a couple of examples. The story in Zenless Zone Zero is actually very good. I know a lot of people are probably saying, oh, there's no overarching like enemy or plot. We don't know what's going on. Well, uh, that's probably because you're skipping most of the stuff and not paying attention and also skipping the TV stuff, which I do not blame you. Uh, because honestly, a lot of the TV stuff shows story. <laughs> it's, it's so stupid. We'll get into that in a second. But uh, the story for ZZZ is actually very, very good. Like, dude, the first chapter, you are trying to, you know, Nico Mata joins the, uh, you know, joins Nicole's crew. And, you know, spoilers ahead, right, for chapter one, if you guys don't want to hear, if you haven't finished it yet. But essentially, the government, which, not the government themselves, but there's an overarching enemy that we don't know yet that's kind of like puppeteering everything from the background, right? And the government really is what we see as the enemy here. So we're just going to go with that. You can think of it similar to like Final Fantasy VII if you've ever played that. Uh, there's a, a group in there called Shinra. They are, it's the government, right? Shinra is the government of Midgar and they're trying to pretty much control the world, blah, 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 and extend their uh, authority and their reach and, and take over more countries and places. And pretty much ZZ government is doing the same thing. For example, Nico Mata is trying to save the slums in which she grew up in, and I believe Nicole as well. The thing is, the government is trying to just commit genocide, like uh, completely annihilate those slums and then blame it on the hollow, saying that they were destroyed by the hollow on the news and cover everything up, even though Nico Mata is trying to stop it and, and come to light with all that stuff. She is almost killed uh, because of this. And, you know, they were going to use that just so they could extend and, you know, monopolize that area. <laughs> like, you know, it, it is really, really dark, really messed up. But the problem with the story, right? And even chapter two story with the construction uh, company is very good. I don't want to get into that, though, because it's spoilers. Maybe people haven't finished chapter two yet. Chapter three is also very good. But the reason that it's like really good story, but also very bad. Dude, the story is designed through the TV system. And I shit you not, it does not matter how much they nerf it. You completely take the immersion out of the story and out of the game when you force us to do the TV stuff and the actual lore and story stuff that's going on happens in the TV. For example, in God of War, when you're learning about new story beats, you're controlling Kratos and you're running through the world 
and they're telling the story as you're playing the game. So if you're saving somebody in some moment, his son, right, Atreus, and you're on your way to fucking get through this shit, do puzzles to go save him, right? In Zenla Zone Zero, there's a group of civilians that you're trying to get out of that sector that's about to be fucking blown up. And you're doing it through the TVs. People didn't even know that you saved civilians. You know why? There's a section with the TVs with the train thing that you have to change the tracks. A lot of people, I've watched so many streamers do this part, they are all skipping the dialogue here because they think it's not important, but it's actually like, I mean, it's not over, like the overarching stuff that happens there. It's not important, like per se, but it does add context to the story. And it also removes immersion from the story to the point when once it gets back to the yapping on the screen, you're like, oh my God, just sat through the TVs and I got sat through, sit through yapping, you know? So that, that part is completely just through the TVs. You save the fucking civilians through the TVs. It is one of the worst fucking things, like one of the worst designs for a story game when it's specifically targeting people that enjoy story games. Like this is a PVE game or story and combat is second. It's always gonna be that way with Hoyaverse, okay? It is primarily a game for story and then combat is a second thing. To have a game like that and have it get completely annihilated because of the TV system is just the stupidest shit ever. Do you know how they could do this perfectly if Hoyoverse somehow watches this video and cares about this? There is a game, for well, a lot of people like Legions, how would you do it then? Since they're hackers and this is how they hack into the TV system to do this. First of all, she's not hacking into the TV, she's hacking into the bang boo that she's controlling. So this should just be stages that they, that they do this, right? And if there is hacking that needs to be done, there's a game called Soul Hackers 2. It's made by the people that made Persona and Shin Megami Tensei, uh, made by Atlas. They just had a recent sequel. The first Soul Hackers was a long time ago. And they just recently, like two or three years ago, did a sequel called Soul Hackers 2. Same vibes as ZZ. Urban fantasy, very pop aesthetic. It very much remind me of, you know, uh, Jet Set Radio aesthetic, graffiti, urban fantasy, clothing, like cyberpunkish kind of. Even teetered on cyberpunk a little bit. And the way that they hack into the TV, the, you know, the system is she herself the main character hacks through the thing they're hacking through right and she gets a digital body digital avatar now in zz where we have the bang boost so we could do that like i don't understand why or you could even think of a game called like Mega Man battle network dude when you're hacking into the network like make it fun make it a stage we go through i'd rather have it like fucking honkai impact third where you're running through a stage than this dumb bullshit tv system the tv system is fine for the roguelike mode because it makes more sense getting the buffs and stuff and the little puzzles i don't mind them right you could find other ways to do puzzles it does not have to be through the tv system for the main story you could do uh you know like in this, the way i'm talking like if there's actual you know platform to go through you could do you know or a linear hallway or linear linear stage for hacking into the system you could put puzzles in there it does not have to you could do it like sorrel does right it does not have to be this tv system i know it's not going to change it's fundamentally built into the game but I think it's one of the things that's gonna really, really hurt them. And it's sad because the story is actually pretty enjoyable. The characters are very expressive and animated. The voice acting is very, very good in every language. And the story actually is very interesting. And I think as the story goes on, it's going to get even more dark for a whole universe game. And it's gonna get even better as it goes on. But unfortunately, a lot of people are probably just gonna skip a lot of shit because they can't be bothered or just gonna quit the game in general. Another example of how DZ is like one of the best and worst I've ever played is the combat. The combat from a glance looks so flashy, so fun, very good animations, right? The parry and the system, the sound effect from the parry is very good. The super dodge, they do have a, you know, unique stuff to their kits, et cetera, but it gets so repetitive. After a while, even I'm, I've done Shiyu defense. I'm as high as you can possibly go right now uh, doing the level 40 stages. I think the highest I've cleared is uh, the this, this seventh floor. I got like a rank on it and uh, past that I can't do because it's the eighth floor is too, too high. Uh, so the uh, if you guys don't know this, the highest level in the game is level 60 and the weapons highest level is also 60. So I believe the floor I'm on right now is there level 50 or 45, I think. And then uh, it's just not worth me doing. Uh, I can clear it and get like a B or whatever. I'm just going to wait till I'm higher level. I've done all the Shiyu defense stuff, right? And 
I've done the roguelike mode. I've done this, which is a simulated universe, right? Uh, version of the, that they have. And it just, it just feels repetitive. I've seen people do like cool combos that you can do, you know, and float enemies, extend the combo, switch people out, switch them in, even when there's not a parry thing going on, just to keep them floating, stuff like that. Sure, it's cool. You can do that, but you don't need to and <laughs> like do that in the game. So, you know, it's not real in, in games like Devil May Cry. You're trying. Here's the here's the thing. People are trying to say I, I roasted someone the other day for saying this. They tried to say that this combat is similar to Devil May Cry. How much of an insult that is to one of my favorite games of all time is crazy. You could say Wuwa is kind of close to Devil May Cry, right? A little bit. But ZZZ, bro, you, there's no, there's not even a jump button. You can't even jump, right? So like, you can't even extend combos in the air and and do crazy things with the characters because you're just stuck on the ground and it's very stagnant and, and repetitive after a while. But the thing with Devil May Cry is there's a style system. So like, you want to do those things to get a higher style system. Like, look, I got SSS freaking. Uh, style points because I, I did some crazy ass combos. There's nothing like that in ZZ. There's no reason to go out of your way and learn like the in-depth like, you know, things that you don't need to do to beat content uh, to make the game more fun per se, as some people are saying. I know a lot of EO is one of the people that's having this this take like hardcore, right? And I, I agree with him on certain points, right? It does feel more fun when you do this, but the problem is 90 something percent of the community that plays this is not gonna do that because they don't need to. They're going to spam left click and just straight up, you know, press the space bar when they hear the ching or or the or the big yellow flash in the screen. And then they're just gonna proceed to left click until their skill is available again in your ult. And that's it. And and I know you're gonna say, oh well that's their problem, but the game's designed that way and that that you literally don't need to do nothing else to beat content in this game. I'm, I'm doing all the shoe defense shit. I'm doing end game and it, it is repetitive. You're just, it, it gets to the point where they're very like just HP spongy and I'm just getting sick and tired of parrying and swapping a character out like a hundred plus times a stage just to beat the stage. It is, it is not fun uh, in my opinion. It does feel fun at first but once you keep getting to the end game, in my opinion, it gets repetitive. And I think they really need to change. Like the 1.1 characters need to be significantly better uh, and have significant like changes to their kit and make them to make them more fun. Because right now, like I know a lot of like EO's thing is like, oh yeah, you know, you can do these cool combos and, and, and you know, swap characters in and out, blah, blah, blah. And the combos doing these in-depth things in their kit. But... I can't even do those things in the end game content because the amount of times the enemy hits me and I have to parry is ridiculous. Like every two seconds, I have to press this press the space bar to swap a character out to parry or I'm going to get hit and interrupt my combo. So like you, the game does not allow you to do those things. <laughs> like unless you're fighting trash mobs, which in the end game, you don't do that. So, you know, it does, it does not matter. Shit, even Final Fantasy 16 has a mode like Devil May Cry where style points where extending your combos does you know give you higher style points and there's a leaderboard right that would make people want to learn to combat more right given a leaderboard you don't even need to give rewards just just for you know bragging rights you know something like that that is the only way people would you know try to learn more of the combat and think oh it's fun it's because i'm kind of competing with other people even though it's just for fun right so i i love the combat but i also hate it because it just becomes brain dead and uh, it just gets really, really repetitive very, very quickly. And that's not a good sign for the future of the end game in this game. All that being said, there are some good things about the game that I don't necessarily have a bad, uh, you know, thing attached to it. The music, very, very good. The characters, I love all the characters so far. Character designs are very, very good. The story, very good, but I did tell you the one issue I had with the story. But I think the way that they tell the story is very fun. You got the manga, the, like the manga comic book strip stuff that they do, the very animated cutscenes, and even the 2D like visual novel story, like uh, telling type stuff that they do as well. They are also very expressive in those screens. So I actually like them. It's just a TV system that really sucks. But I love the vibe of the game and the look of the aesthetic of the game and the characters, the persona aspect, the, you know, the jet set radio aspect, urban fantasy. It's very, very good. I think the story can go a long way. But I think definitely the two massive problems with the game are also the same, you know, positives of the game, if that makes sense to you. Like the positives are also the negatives. The story's good, 
but the way they tell the story through the TV is very bad. The combat is good, but it gets very repetitive and end game gets very repetitive. So that honestly gets kind of really bad as well. Now, I want you guys to let me know if you agree uh, in the comment section down below or tell me things that you are not liking about the game or that you enjoy about the game um, in the comments down below. I want to see some discussions about the community and because uh, I've been seeing a lot of mixed things from a lot of creators, a lot of the you know community as well. The players have been kind of vocal, wh whether they either like it or dislike it. A lot of people are asking me, do I like ZZZ? I've already done a review on this game based on the last beta and the, pre the beta previously. My thoughts on the game is the same exact thing as they were for the last beta. I played the last beta for like 50 plus hours. I was like level almost, what was the max level? 36, I think. I was max level in the beta or maybe close to it. I, I did all the story that was there, which started chapter three and then it cliffhanged. I'm gonna do chapter three on stream um, in, a few, in a day or two from now. And I'm curious to see how much better that is because they did tease like a, you know, Hersher of uh, Dominance kind of thing with the Theater of Dominance like they did in Honkai and Third. That looked really cool. Uh, so I'm excited for the story there. But uh, yeah, overall, I think my thoughts are kind of still the same. I think that this is very much a side game when Wuthering Waves and Sawrail has nothing going on. Um, and even then, I just want to play this game when there's a new patch and that's it. I'm going to log in waste my stamina, do my dailies, which does not take long at all. Uh, and like, honestly, probably like five to 10 minutes, if that, seven minutes maybe. And I'm just gonna only play the game when there's an event to do, if the event's not too annoying. I'm come, I'm free to play in this. I've only bought the battle pass, so free to play plus, I guess. I'm not spending money on packs or anything like that. Um, I just got the, the monthly pass and that's it. And uh, I'm just gonna stay that way and I'm, I might get to the point where I just don't even get the free to play, you know, the battle pass either because, uh, not free to play, or the battle pass, because it, I don't care enough about the game to want to spend money on it, you know? And I'd rather spend that money on Wuthering Waves or Star Rail, so yeah, I don't know. I'm going to uh, continue to play it for story only. Um, and other than that, just do dailies and uh, end game stuff when it resets. Hopefully if it doesn't make me want to end it all i'm just gonna be the 13th reason why because i'm not gonna lie some of the end game stuff was making me fall asleep on stream because it was just literally I, I will show you guys a clip this was me fighting a boss in simulated universe literally only looking at chat at my camera pressing the left click on my mouse and spamming e at the same time so when ability popped up it would use it and then only when i heard the noise for parry or dodge i would press space That's so awkward. I kept staring into the screen. <laughs> That's one of the end game modes, by the way. Simulator Universe. Yep. You know, here's another one of another little mini boss. So yeah, as you can see, where everyone keeps saying, oh, the end game is gonna get harder. Does not, it does not, damn, that was awkward as hell. <laughs> like chat must've felt so awkward. But yeah, as you can see, you know, I was getting really fucking bored because the enemies are not aggressive enough. And then even when they are, when you're doing Shiyu defense, it, all you're doing is just pressing space. It's not difficult at all. Uh, I never expected it to be difficult, but it's it just really repetitive, and that makes it very boring. At least with Genshin, you have the elemental reactions, which makes the game kind of fun because you have rotations uh, that you need to do, right? And, and, and there's a little bit more of a learning curve, I feel like, to that. In this game, you could literally just spam left-click, use your skills when they're available, and just press the space bar when you hear the noise or see the bright yellow flash. The reason that uh, Wuthering Waves does this better is because it's precise. The parry is precise and you have to hit a timing window to get that parry, unless you use Gion. But, you know, it's just a lot more skill and a lot more fun to parry in that game. 
even though the parry feels more satisfying in this game it just it's just, it just is not fun it's not at all and that i think is one of my biggest gripes because i love combat and i was excited for the combat in this game and i kept giving it a benefit of doubt i was like no when we get that in game it'll be better it'll get better when we get that in game it'll get better nope it's, it, in my opinion got even worse uh because they're just very very spongy the enemies are just bullet sponges and you're just sitting there wailing on them with left click i'm gonna have to buy a new fucking mouse at this point and i just fucking bought this goddamn thing let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you guys like this video hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification i'll be notified for future videos star rail zz withering ways many many more coming very excited for azure Premilia and chaos zero nightmare the uh, creators of uh, epic seven are doing that game so let me know your thoughts and i hope to see some good discussions in the comment section thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys on the next video.